So hello, everyone. Um, let's talk about visualizing the GitOps container journey. So uh, a bit more about myself. My name is Samia. I'm a software engineer based out of San Francisco. Uh, I work in the commercial software engineering team here at Microsoft. And this is where my journey with Kubernetes began. We help partners with Kubernetes-based solutions and share results as open source projects. So before I jump in into any GitOps observability um, principles, let's do a very quick recap on GitOps. Uh, I'm sure you're all uh, familiar with this, but in a very simple GitOps process, the developer pushes code to their Git repository, which kicks off a CI build um, that pushes a new Docker image for that code change. The cluster is um, synced to a config repository and Flux is running on the cluster, which can pull the Docker image and deploy the changes pushed by the developer. So in a typical um, workflow, you have a release, you have an observation, or your orientation around what you just released, and then you go and make a decision based on your observation. In GitOps observability, we are mainly concerned with the left side of this, which is all about your acting and releasing. And there are already tools out there that people use for in-cluster monitoring. Being able to know how long something takes to get to your cluster being able to see how it's getting there, if a pull request is blocking deployment, or if a deployment did go into the cluster successfully, but introduced a breaking change. All of that is very important. And that's what we want to tie back to the Git commit it came from. So that's the area that we are focusing on. As we've been working with several customers, we have seen problems start to increase with more microservices and organizational com complexity. The reality is teams work in branches, Oftentimes applications will be deployed from branches other than your main branch. And if you're embracing a microservice architecture, you most likely have services across many branches. Coordination between developers and operations teams also increases complexity. This can get even more complicated if you're multi-tenant or you're performing ring deployments. Some teams may perform ring deployments or flight features, which further adds complexity to how we release software. Another thing is inconsistent feedback cycles. Let's say you're working with several teams and a couple of them need to do some rollbacks. How does it look in the GitOps view? How do we know what's going on? Um, these are some of the challenges that we've seen with our partners. Now let's consider a quick scenario where GitOps can be applied. Fabricam Trivia is a small team building a trivia website. They're now trying to increase their usage by integrating several APIs to their website which are being built by different teams. So let's see what their scenario looks like and how GitOps can help them. So far, they had a monolith application, and now they would like to modernize their setup to include deployment of microservices. Perhaps each of the different API um, trivia topics could be served by a different API module. And the main idea behind a microservice architecture is applications are simpler to build and maintain when broken down into smaller pieces um, that can work seamlessly together. So these are the different APIs they will be integrating into their infrastructure. Fabricam Trivia engineers learn about GitOps and now they start to store Helm charts for their environments in a separate folder in their, in their Git repositories. So the CICD pipelines will generate these charts into Kubernetes manifests and Flux is running on, on the clusters which syncs the generated manifest to the cluster. So as we can see in this figure, they have quite a few developer teams pushing code into their repositories, triggering CI builds. It generates several Docker images. Then approvers are another uh, set of individuals who approve the changes to be deployed into the infrastructure by um, generating the Helm charts through the CD pipelines. So this architecture has finally allowed Fabricam Trivia engineers to incorporate work from several teams. But now their developer Danny and operator Oliver run into some new problems. They're finding that managing multiple microservices pushing into the same cluster has become complex. There's so many CI CD pipelines and tracking is difficult. For example, each microservice has a pipeline for their CI build and one for their CD build resulting in two end pipelines. They also have difficulty versioning. And what that means is um, developers have trouble testing their beta versions with stable versions of other microservices. So they want to decouple microservices from each other. And lastly, their operator Oliver is lacking observability into what gets deployed, versions, audit logs, and he has trouble fixing issues if something makes it into production. 
Barbican Trivia engineers realized they would like to test their features in a single cluster to cut cost because they're a small company. They learn about the concept of deployment rings um, that allow multiple environments to exist in a single cluster with the help of a service mesh. So deployment rings basically allow you to group users into cohorts based on the features of your application that you wish to expose to them, kind of similar to AB or canary testing, but in a more formalized manner in which you roll changes from a smaller ring into a larger ring. This would allow them to test their features in the production ring, uh, production cluster within, um, by just setting a header on the ingress routes. And each developer would be able to test features in that production cluster without dis disturbing the main production ring. So here's how a developer working on a new feature can first test their changes in a ring within the same cluster and then advance it to a header that's being used by early adopters of the application. And then finally make its way to the production cluster when it's, it's been well tested. This concept of deployment rings has been widely requested in our interactions with all of the customers that we work with um, that are using GitOps with Azure. Fabricam trivia operator Oliver is on call and one night he receives a call at 3 a.m. He finds out that there's a bug in production that needs to be addressed immediately. And he probably needs help from the appropriate developer to fix this. So he, he, he wants to be able to glance at a page and find out the right contact whose feature recently made it into production. He would also like to know how long it would take for that deployment to go through approximately so he can update the customer on the line. So all of this leads us to ask, what is the ideal solution that we want for GitOps observability? We have seen that our customers are using different CI/CD orchestrator tools. Some are using GitHub Actions with GitHub repos. Some are using GitLab. Some are using Bitbucket. Some are using Azure DevOps. The idea is the GitOps observability tool should be portable. Even within a company, sometimes you have different teams using different CI/CD tools. We want to support different storage solutions and container registries. A tool that can be plugged into a new ecosystem easily is desired. Secondly, we want the solution to be lightweight, fast, and plug anywhere by just launching a Docker image. This kind of ties back with our observation that customers may want to embed this software internally or host it behind an authentication layer. A lightweight solution would allow for easy plug and play. Third, we want it to be secure and not require access to the cluster directly and also work behind custom security configuration that can be set up by organizations easily. Um, there are already many tools out there that offer in-cluster monitoring, so we don't have to reinvent that wheel here. Fourth, um, we want the solution to scale easily as microservices grow. One of our recent customers had a really large number of microservices that calls for a very good user-friendly filtering experience, along with the need to handle large deployment data in the storage. Fifth, we want to support different deployment strategies, such as deployment rings and environments. As we were working with a customer who wanted to test features in a dev cluster, we found that developers increase productivity by being able to create a new ring easily by creating a, a branch with a specific naming convention and then being able to test their feature and tear down that ring after. It would be ideal to monitor these rings in, in our observability tool as well. And lastly, we want this tool to help us predict the time and success rate of the deployments by just glancing at a page. This is really helpful if we are able to see durations for the last few recent deployments. Now we look at one way we solve this with our recent attempt at Spectate. So Spectate is our GitOps observability tool that provides a dashboard with a tabular view into the most recent deployments. It helps to answer questions such as what microservices are running from CI all the way to the cluster? What deployment rings are they tied with? Who are the authors of these deployments? Is there a deployment waiting to be deployed into the cluster? And if it has been deployed, who approved it? What changes were made in the Helm charts or the cluster config? Were these changes synced successfully by Flux? And as we discussed earlier, this gives you insight into the journey it takes before it gets to the cluster. So let's see a quick demo. Danny from the trivia team loads up the dashboard and glances at the activity in the cluster. The image below that you're seeing is a screenshot from Spectate. Yvonne, one of the developers on the team, just merged a new change into the dev branch. And as a result, you see her deployment at the very top with some columns not filled out to the right 
as a deploy deployment is shown to still be in progress under the state column. As the deployment is progressing, we will see more columns be filled out. Once the Docker image is done creating, we can see that the image creation column has turned green. As a metadata update completes, that turns green as well. And actually this change is uh, made by creating a pull request against um, th that repository to allow someone to approve those changes before they are merged in. At this stage, someone looking at the page can help unblock a pending pull request um, to allow our developers to test their changes in the cluster. And once that PR is merged, it updates the merge by column with the name of the approver. And that merge kicks off the final step in this deployment process, which uses tools such as Helm, Fabricate, or Customize to generate the Kubernetes manifests and push them into the, the manifest repository. Flux is watching this manifest repository. And once the change is picked up by Flux, Flux will push a tag to the repository to indicate it has synced to that commit. And it looks like the change was picked up by Flux. So this is our original version of Spectate that is still using Flux v1. It uses the tag name to determine the cluster name. And our assumption here is that there can be multiple clusters syncing against this manifest repo. I just want to add that the experience you're seeing currently is agnostic of the CI CD tools. So for example, Spectate builds a similar user experience for GitHub Actions, GitLab repositories, and Azure repos. We would love to keep adding support uh, and expanding support for more tools as we work with more partners. So from there, we can, uh, you know, we can go to the cluster and run kubectl get pods, and we can see that the pods were recently updated. Another tool that we created is called the Bedrock CLI. So we can set up the Spectate dashboard using the Bedrock CLI. And this allows you to create GitOps pipelines easily and also hooks them up for observability. This way Spectate already has all the data it needs to start um, showing, showing you that dashboard as soon as you launch it. Bedrock is our culmination of experience on how to run workloads in Kubernetes from working with several teams internally and externally. So this is a very simple uh, Bedrock scenario. Our friend Danny wants to download the CLI and launch the dashboard. So he can run the setup command and get the GitOps pipelines going in just a few minutes. And then Danny can pull up Spectate by running the dashboard command. This demystifies GitOps for a lot of people by giving you a rocket to go from point A to point B. So a typical bedrock process goes as follows. A developer in the, in the team pushes a, a code change into the code repository which kicks off the CI build that creates the, a Docker image uh, and pushes it into a container registry, such as Azure Container Registry. And that change kicks off the second part of the bedrock process in which metadata is updated, such as the Docker image tag or any other config um, set up by the team or required by the Helm charts. We have a concept of something called a high level definition repository and a tool called Fabricate which relies on Helm. It allows you to deal with higher level abstractions of YAML. And this is a great way to deal with multi-cluster and multi-region setups. So after this PR gets um, merged, another P uh, pipeline is triggered, which is the final step in the bedrock process. This tool again uses Fabricate to generate that high level abstract YAML into the Kubernetes YAML. And Flux is running on the cluster which is able to sync um, to, to this change that's pushed into the manifest and it can pull Docker images from the container registry. And finally, Spectate is powered by a storage which captures all these steps in the bedrock process to show the visualization. So what exactly is bedrock? With our customers, we found that a tool that can automate setup and creation of pipelines, scaffolding of the high level definition repositories and a quick way to get the dashboard up and running improve the GitOps onboarding experience. With Bedrock and Fabricate, it's easier to set up a high level abstract YAML that describes the config in the cluster and just two simple commands, uh, fab install and fab generate that generate the YAML into the manifest. Here are two examples of recent projects where we applied Bedrock. So in the project uh, that enabled COVID-19 exposure notifications across the United States, we used it in the continuous integration and deployment of the national key server which allows um, for the anonymous identifiers known as temporary exposure keys to be exchanged and users notified if they have been exposed. 
We also applied it in our most recent Bedrock project to deploy Gen3, which is a data platform to build data commons used widely by researchers and bioinformaticians. Here's the fun part. Let's see how Flux V2 can improve Spectate even more. So as most of you are already aware, Flux V2 comes with a notification controller that can notify a webhook for alerts in the source, customize, or the Helm controller. These notifications can be utilized in, in tools such as Spectate to improve them even more. GitOps Connector is a tool uh, built here by a team at Microsoft which sits between the notification controller and CI CD tools. It sends enriched notifications as JSON objects to all of these tools that allows for better observability. And it can also notify n number of subscribers with this data as well. This helps to close the observability gap between the orchestrators and Flux. So here's an example of how the GitOps connector improves the observability in Azure DevOps in GitHub Actions. It receives notifications from the not notification controller in Flux. It processes it, it and it sends this JSON to the APIs in Azure DevOps and GitHub Actions. And then the result is a visual on um, the manifest commit repository that allows the users to see the status of, um, of their commit on, on the cluster. So here's a quick screenshot of how this experience is looking like. Previously, if you recall, Flux V1 um, inspected it was just giving us a tag that confirms the manifest commit that it was synced with. And now with the help of Flux V2's notification controller and the GitOps connector, Spectate is able to show notifications from the customized controller with these timestamps. And the user can click under the synced cluster column to open this panel. We're currently still in the process of enriching the notifications from Flux V2 and Spectate, and we applied some of these tools in the Gen3 project as well. So here's a summary of what uh, we talked about. Um, we learned about the GitOps observability, um, what we're focusing on inside of that, what an ideal solution could look like. We talked about how we ad uh, address this in Spectate and how Flux V2 could improve these even more. Thank you so much for joining today. Happy to take any, any questions in Slack after.